So a big problem with solar power systems is that you actually have to build it. And if you screw it up, your system could catch on fire and burn your house down. So today we're gonna to talk about an integrated all-in-one solar power system in a box. So this has the inverter, the charge controller, the AC charger, the automatic transfer switch, the circuit breakers, all the wiring, and it's all in one package. So all you have to do is connect some solar panels and a battery, and then connect an AC extension cord so that you can power your AC loads and connect to grid if you wish, and you're done. This will do everything, and it's also cheaper than if you were to buy the system components individually. And the entire system should only take about an hour to install. It is very easy. And you can also buy these cables prefabricated on my website. So literally, it's a positive and a negative going from the battery to here, and then a positive and negative from your solar panels going into here. The hardest part of this system is cutting and stripping an extension cord, but you can buy this at Home Depot or any other store, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that. First, you wanna mount it to a wooden board. This is a wooden board and I painted it white and you have two screws on the very top. There are no mounting brackets on the bottom and that's one of the downsides of these units. But if you do not like that, you can put VHB tape on the bottom or put a strap across. That shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. Just screw it into a piece of wood. Now what we wanna do is take the screws out of the bottom cover. And when you remove this cover, you will have battery terminals. There's a negative and a positive. And then we have the solar panel inputs, negative and positive. And then on this side, we have the AC input and the output. So first take your negative wire and unscrew the terminal screw and then put it through the hole. And then repeat the same process for the positive or the red wire. And that's it, our battery cables are now installed. Now we wanna focus our attention to the AC input terminals. We have the AC input on the top, these three, and then the AC output or the inverter output down here. And so what we need to do is attach these extension cords with AC wires to these AC input terminals. And on the metal, you will see a ground, an L, and an N. And so on our wire, we have a ground, which is green, L, which is black, and then a white, which is in. So what we wanna do is shove these wires into these terminals after we strip them, and then screw the terminal down with a screwdriver. And so for this part, you're gonna to need to buy a wire stripper. And if you buy an extension cord, you're gonna have a male and a female. And the female will connect to the AC output, and that's on bottom. So this one needs to connect on bottom to the AC output. And we're gonna start with the ground wire. Now the neutral wire and then screw it down. And this looks really good, but we need to strengthen this joint because this wire or cable could be yanked out. So you wanna use these little wire cable clips and mount it to the piece of wood. Now we need to add a male prong AC extension cord to this AC input on top. And look at that, that is so easy. And just a quick safety reminder, if you were to switch these, this could shock you. So you do not wanna switch these plugs. This one goes to the inverter or the AC output, and this one goes to the AC input. Very, very important. Now that we have the AC power cables and the battery cables, we're gonna attach the battery first. And because this is a battle born, it has its own overcurrent protection. If this was a lead acid, you would have to add a fuse to the positive, but we don't have to, so we're gonna attach these bare wires directly to the positive and the negative terminals of the battery. And because this is a battle born, it comes with these half inch studs and you have to use half inch wrenches to tighten them. So super simple procedure, just stick it in there and tighten it down. And after you connect the battery, just turn it on with the power switch. <laughs> oh God, I hate that noise. They make the worst noises for the startup, jeez. And if you look at the screen, it's pretty self-explanatory. So we have input AC, and that's where your shore power or grid power, when it's connected, it will show 120 volts, for example. On the output, this is what your inverter is producing with battery power. Now, if you wanna see more system stats, you need to press the down arrow. And so on this side, you will see zero hertz because we're still not connected to AC at the input. If you press it again, it will say PV, and that's how much volts your solar panels are producing. 
If you press it down again, it will show the battery voltage. So my Battleborn right now is at 13 volts. If you press down again, it will show you the hertz at the output of your inverter and 60 hertz is what we want. If you press it again, it will show you the percent load. So if I am using only 50% of the max rated capacity watt wise of this inverter, it will show 50%. And if I'm approaching 100% and it cannot power it, it will switch it over to the grid's power. And then battery is how many amps it's using right now. Right now it's just doing standby, so it's only using one amp. The standby idle consumption of this inverter is 14.4 watts, so this is very consistent with those numbers. And if you wanna change any of the settings, hold down the enter button, and then press the down arrow, and then at zero one, you can change the setting by pressing enter, and then this will flash. And this is solar or utility priority. I absolutely recommend people reading the manual and figuring out what you need for your application. I will also have some example settings that you guys can copy that will make most people happy on my website. So please check this out. But there are lots of settings in here. You can do everything on this little tiny screen. Now that we have the basics, let's add some solar panels to this system. But when you connect your own solar panels to these terminals, you need to ensure that the open circuit voltage is not exceeded. So for this one, it's 145 volts. So if you have like four 100 watt solar panels in series, you can connect those directly to here. It will have an open circuit of like 82 to 84 volts, and that's well within the safe range. I would keep it under like 85 volts to be on the safe side. And as long as you do not exceed that max solar input voltage limit, and you also do not use more than 500 watts of solar panels, you can connect whatever solar panels you want into here. And so for me, I'm going to use this XT60 connector that I fabricated to connect these two 100 watt panels in series. And then we're gonna have a positive and a negative that we can connect to this input terminal. And now you can just push them down like this. And it's also a smart idea to secure these solar panel wires so it doesn't get yanked off and you will not damage these input terminals. Now that this wire is connected, we can hook up some solar panels. And now we have some sunshine the next day and we have 35 volts coming from the solar panels. So one amp coming in and that is 33 watts. And at 12 volts, that's like two amps. So you can see a little solar panel depiction and it's charging up our battery and it's powering our AC loads. And now we're gonna test if this inverter works. So take the female plug and plug in an appliance and turn it on. See, look at that. And on the screen, it says that we're using 48 watts. And we can turn it up. Now we're using 655 watts. And if you wanna use grid power, just connect this to any wall outlet. You just plug it in. Just make sure that you use a cable that's long enough to reach your AC outlet. I made this one really short as an example, but yeah, I would make it a lot longer if I was building this for my home system. Now everything's wired up and we can replace this faceplate. And this is actually the hardest part. <laughs> this is so hard to hold it here and then find the little screw thing. Now we're gonna do a cool test. We have grid power connected and at the AC input, it says that we have 113 volts and 60 Hertz. And we're gonna connect a 1500 watt heat gun to this inverter. This inverter can only handle 800 watts. So when this is overloaded and it senses that this is using too much power, it will switch this over to the grid power. So check this out. We have it on the full heat setting. We're gonna turn it on two, and right now it can power this, but if you turn it on full blast, it just switched over to grid power. And you can see the AC wave sign, and there's a bypass on the screen to power our loads. So now our loads are not powered off of solar or the battery, it is powered only with the grid. And you can also change the settings so that when this battery reaches a certain voltage because it's low, it will switch everything over to the grid power. It's a very useful setting if you have this thing connected to grid. And this system will not feed back into the grid. It's only a transfer switch. So it will only switch between one source or another. It will not push power back into the grid. So you don't have to worry about permits or anything else. How cool is this, guys? We have a full solar power system. If you wanna make the battery bigger, add 
more batteries and connect them in parallel. So that means add positive to a positive of another battery and negative to a negative of another battery. So just buy some battery cables and add as many batteries as you would like. Also, I'm gonna have some settings on my website because I wanted to show in this video how to do it, but it would take like an hour for me to explain every single setting. So I'm gonna have some example settings and a manual on my website. So check that out if you wanna learn more about doing that. If you wanna build a bigger system, there's also a 24 volt version. So you would take two Battleborns, connect them in series, and then connect it to the 24 volt version. That one has a 2,400 watt inverter, and it's actually right over here. <laughs> so check it out, this thing is huge. This thing is extremely powerful, but what's so cool is that you program it the same as you would this little tiny 12 volt one. This one has a huge 80 amp MPPT and has a huge AC charger. So check this out if you want to build a bigger system. It's just as easy to mount and install as this one, but it can handle a lot more power. And that's pretty much it guys. Please let me know if this video helped you. It was super fun building this and I think this will make a lot of people happy. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.